Most of the fossils on display in the exhibition were found at two sites in the Scottish borders, Burnmouth on the coast and Willie's Hole, which is an area on the Whitadder water, which is a tributary of the River Tweed. Fossils were originally discovered here a few years ago by a local collector, Stan Wood. Stan came across this site several years ago and realised some very important fossils in the riverbed of the River Whitadder. The rocks that are exposed at Burnmouth and at Willie's Hole are amongst the oldest Carboniferous rocks that we have in the UK. The Carboniferous follows a period called the Devonian, which is famous for its fossil fishes. It also has some of the earliest known tetrapods, these creatures that have four legs rather than fins. But the early part of the Carboniferous that immediately follows this has for a long time been devoid of fossils. We've not found fossils there before. And it was a period that was given the name Roma's Gap, around about 50 million years long. When Stan was here in 2007, he was working on the shore and to get a significant amount of this material away, he cleared all of this stuff. And what he found in that was a beautiful myriapod fossil. A few years later, I came back and started finding stuff below here. I found a partial skeleton of an early tetrapod. This was the very first partially articulated animal with both skull elements and postcranial elements. In the summer of 2015, National Museum of Scotland organised an excavation to collect more material from Willie's Hold. And to do that, we needed to dam off the river so we could actually drain it to get to the beds underneath. As far as we're aware, this technique has never been done in a paleontological excavation before. Once the site was drained and we had access to the fossiliferous beds, there was two beds, one with amphibian fossils, which we primarily wanted to excavate, and below that there was a plant bed, and we wanted to collect plants to get a bigger picture of other things living at that time. At both uh, Churnside and at Burnmouth, we're using very standard techniques, chisels, hammers, jackhammers, to actually take out the blocks and to split and look for fossils. If we found something interesting, we'd take the whole block back as it is. Otherwise, we'll continue splitting the rock down just to see if there's anything in it. However, we knew that there were a lot of interesting fossils. So one of the, the techniques which we used at Burnmouth is we took out a, a metre square of sediment, not knowing there was anything in there, but until later on when we looked at the, the blocks under CT scanning. One of the interesting things that we did at uh, Churnside was to scan the site. So we got LIDAR scanning, uh, three-dimensional scanning of the site before we did any excavation and also afterwards. The 3D scan means that we can build up a really detailed picture of the site. So with a 3D scan you could look at the entire site from any angle you could possibly want to to try and work out the relationships of the different beds, how they relate to each other, where the fossils are found. The other interesting thing about that is that, say, in another two, three decades, someone else wants to go back, they'll know exactly in the riverbed where we were digging and then can take the, the excavation further back from that. We found a variety of different fossils at Willis Hole in the excavation that we did in the summer of 2015. It was primarily to dig out amphibian remains and we did find a lot of bones. We also collected a lot of other fossils. Uh, immediately below the amphibian bed there's a lot of fossil plants. We found the oldest uh, tetrapod material known in the UK. Once we decided on the material that we wanted to keep, those specimens were carefully wrapped and put in plastic crates and then taken to a store in Edinburgh. And these are specimens which we've collected very recently and so they have never seen the light of day uh, until now. For many years people thought there was no land animals from this period of time. But thanks to this project we have filled Roma's gap. There is no longer a gap.
No one knew what went on in this time frame between 360 odd million years ago and 345 million years ago. You suddenly see these things for the first time and they're, some of them are really quite weird animals. What happened on Earth in this area 350 odd million years ago? I defy anyone not to be excited by that.